So today I'm going to be talking about Lutron Vive and Palp Hacks. Um, so if you're not familiar with what that is, um, I have these Cree lights. See they're linear fixtures. Um, they're called LS fixtures. And I have uh, four of them. I have a 12 footer, 16 foot, 12 and 12. Um, and those are like a, more of a commercial style light, which means that they use something called zero to 10 volt dimming. So there's a dimmer that's attached to them, not like your traditional dimmer switch that you would have on the wall, but something that actually provides a separate voltage for um, lighting. And those are more commonly found in commercial infrastructure, office buildings, you know, those types of places. And I've had these for a couple of months now. So when I ordered the lights, the lights came in pretty quickly, but the, um, the dimmers, the actual like dimmer controllers and light controllers were on back order. So they took a while to come in. So I found some temporary ones um, that are like an app that you can control on your phone. And I did a video on that. I'll link to that in the description. Um, but my Lutron stuff has been here for a little while and I thought it was time for me to install this. So what I have are two of these Lutron POW packs, which are the actual power packs. So I'm gonna do two zones. One zone is gonna be those two rows of lights, my small garage bay, and the other zone is going to be these two garage lights, which is my large garage bay. So you need one of these for every zone. So this is a POW pack. Um, this POW pack can support up to eight amps, and these lights I think are like two a piece. Um, so it could actually, I can control the whole thing off of one if I wanted to. Also have four of these. These are switches and they are a wireless switch that connects wirelessly to the Lutron POW pack. I have four of them because I'm going to set each zone up with two switches. So I'll actually have switches in my entryway to my garage and I'll also have switches over by my garage door where you can come in from the garage door. Um, so this will just give me a little bit more versatility and I thought why not just grab two more switches and try them out. I also have these wall mount brackets which allow me to mount them in the place of an existing standard switch or mount them flush on the wall. So to talk a little bit about my installation, my power comes into my garage and it hits a normal light switch that is here. So this light switch provides power up into my attic and it used to have traditional lights that were connected to it directly. So you turn the light on, they come on, you turn the light off, they come off. These controllers require constant power to them and then they provide the power output to the lights and the dimming for the lights. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to connect that, bypass that switch basically, just connect direct power from the feed to the attic. And then in the attic, I have two junction boxes, one for this side of the garage and one for this side of the garage. And each of those junction boxes has the power in, currently coming from the switch, the power out, which goes to each light individually, and a zero to 10 volt wire that is a small gauge wire that provides the dimming control. And I have that currently connected to the Wi-Fi based controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up in the attic. We're gonna get the POW pack wired in and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so here I am in the attic. This is what the junction boxes look like. So here is the dimmer controller. You can see um, I've got power coming in, which is this wire here. Um, I've got load going out to each of the lights and they're labeled individually one and two um, So this is the load side of the old controller um, This is the input side of the old controller as well as this black wire right here and none of this is hot and Then over here are my dimmer wires one thing that is different um, this old controller had the dimmer wires in that post. The, old, the new one does not. They're actually a connector here. So I'm going to have to run a small wire around and into the box for that. So here, this is wired in. It's got our power up and down buttons. Um, we've got our whites are all tied together. So power, Vive, both lights. Black is power in to the Vive. And then red is out to the lights. The dimmers are tied together. Um, one thing that is different about this, like I said, is that the dimmer 
connector is outside the box. So I have a piece of um, dimmer wire that I ran outside of the box, and that's going to come around and connect into the back side of the dimmer. So I'll do that right now. All right, so our dimmer wire is now connected to outside of the box. Put the lid on, and we'll program our controllers. Okay, so now this is powered up. In order to control these with the controller, you need to pair them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold this button until that light starts to blink. Then on the first controller, we're gonna press and hold the light until it starts to blink quickly. And you'll see that this has started to blink quickly as well. So now they'll both stop at the same time. And then we can go to the second controller, press and hold until it starts to blink quickly. Both blink quickly. Then when they stop blinking quickly, we can take this out of programming mode by pressing and holding the power button. And now we're out of power, now we're out of programming. So let's get out of the attic. I went ahead and installed the dimmer on the other side. So now we're just going to work on the light switches. All right, so we have our controllers programmed. So this one is that side. This one over in my other hand is the one that's above the camera. So both are working just fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these installed in the wall. So I'm going to remove the switch that powers on the lights currently, the old switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this together so that it's always on, basically, so the switch is always together. And I'm going to put a new switch in its place that's wireless. So Okay, so we're going to open up the switch that is for this side, so here in my hand, and we're going to open up one of these um, covers or mounting plates. And basically what I want to do here is I want to make this, um, I want to make the switch mount in this spot. So, Looking at the back of it, there's like an adhesive strip on it, so we're going to pop that out. And then it kind of slides into this receiver thing. And then this is going to screw in using the standard, the standard screw holes that are already there. It could use some screws in the box. Okay, so we've got that tight. Now, for the other one, because it's flush mount, we're going to take the same mounting kit, different mounting kit, and this time there's a door that we're going to remove. So that's this top door here. And it says remove door if flush mount. Just need something pointy to pop the tabs off. Okay, so there we are. Now we are going to open our other switch. We're going to slide into the same tab, but this time it's going to go further back because that cover is gone. And now it sits kind of like recessed. So What we're gonna do is we're gonna take, got this triple plate here. We're gonna take this, we're gonna line it up for those two. Stick this third one in there. 
And then we're going to figure out where our holes land and mark them. Okay, so they're marked. Now, I will line this up and put the screws in. So there's, there's, there's the holes that I just marked are the upper ones, the lower ones are where it actually mounts. Okay, so now those are screwed in. Now we can mount our cover. All right, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, so they have an off button on the bottom, an on button on the top. So that's on, and it's like the highest brightness, right? So here is on, here is on, then this is off. So that side shut off, this side shut off. And then there's like a center button. You can see the little dimple here. Uh, center button takes it to like 50% brightness. And then you can go up, down, however you see fit um, to adjust the, the lighting. So um, really when I walk in the room, I can just tap the button, it puts it at 50%. I can press this button, it goes all the way to 100. Um, or I can press this button, turn it off, and that shuts them both off. So that's pretty cool. So now I have two more switches, and my thought is to mount them over here, something like this. Um, I'm not 100% sure where they're going to go yet, so for now I think I'm just going to hold off on mounting these, but they are programmed. These ones do work too, so if I press this button, it shuts off that side. If I press this button, it shuts off that side. Here's on for one, on for the other. Um, so they, you know, they do function simultaneously. Um, obviously what I'll have to do here, because there's no box, is just surface mount them both, like I did for that one all the way on the right. Um, but that's really about it. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time playing with them, and then I'll come back and tell you guys what I think. Um, but so far, they seem to work really well. Uh, the app-based one was actually kind of cool, but um, the one thing that kind of sucked about it was you had to pull your phone out to adjust the brightness, which, whatever. Um, and the second thing was, when you turn the light switch on, it took about two seconds for them to actually come on. Um, so that kind of left you like, my kids come out here and they turn the light switch on, then it doesn't come on. And they press the other button and they turn the light on outside. And then like the light comes on in here and then they think that they turn it on and they leave the light on outside all day, all the time. So I realize it's just two switches. Like this one does the outside, this one does the inside. It's pretty easy to understand, but anyway. All right, so to close the loop on the Lutron switches, I really, really like them. Um, you know, after using the app for a while, I found that I was using the power switch to turn my lights on and off, but I was never really using the app unless I specifically was trying to do something, like if I was detailing or if I was, um, you know, if I only wanted half the garage lit because I was spending some time out here, something like that. Um, and mostly because the app is a pain in the butt. You have to pull your phone out, you have to find the app, you have to open the app, you have to wait for it to connect, and then you can control it. It worked well, um, but I think that this is a superior solution just because it's very easy for you to do, and you can take, you know, instead of mounting this on the wall, you could take them as a controller and you could have a separate little remote, which works out well. Um, you know, from a functionality perspective, you can very easily say, I want 100% brightness, or I want 50% brightness, or I want 0% brightness, and you know, just turn the light off like that. Um, and then you know, anywhere in between. So if I just wanna tick the brightness down a little bit, I can press and hold on the dim, it takes it down, very simple. Um, I showed the switches to my kids, and I, I just had Eric, I said, hey, turn the light on. Like he came out here, turn the light on. And he walks over and he was immediately able to figure it out. It's intuitive, they work well. My eight-year-old got confused by it, but once she started pressing buttons, she was fine. So, you know, there's full brightness, half brightness, zero brightness, and then up and down from any number that you're at. And now I have my two zones separate on the wall, and I have a separate controller for, the, um, for me to put elsewhere. So this allows me to add switches in a place where there wasn't already a switch, which I think is really cool. 
You know, so if you maybe don't have wires in the wall or you want to put a switch in a different place because your switch is just in a bad spot, great. Um, one thing that I also will add is I bought, um, instead of using normal wire nuts, I bought ideal push terminals um, when I did this switch in the wall. And those are really, really nice. I don't know why we in the United States don't use those more often. Like I know they have Wagos or Wagos or whatever in Europe, um, but we use the stupid wire nuts, which honestly kind of suck. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to start using those push terminals more often. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.